To state the obvious, and I'm ending here, I promise you, we have to defeat Donald Trump. You know, because we can't, this is literal, we can't get a damn thing done unless he's defeated. It's going to take a hell of a lot of work to make up for all the damage he's done internationally and nationally. His network of thugs and co-conspirators are going to continue to try to undermine our democracy in the meantime. Imagine what he can do in another year. Imagine what can happen in Ukraine. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm your boy, Fat Mike. And today we're going to be talking about this craziness going on between Russia and Ukraine and how I believe that it's Joe Biden's fault for all this shit happening. As you've seen in this first video here, it's him before the election, him trying to persuade everybody on how if Donald Trump got another term that this would have been all his doing, we would be in the same position as we are because of Joe Biden, because of Trump. When we managed to get through four years without starting any new wars, or escalating the war further in the Middle East. But no, we didn't do none of that shit. He kept everything pretty chill. And on top of that, he brought down gas lower than any Democrat would ever fucking do during the time of war. And then everybody keeps on saying on how Donald Trump would have brought us into World War III. Well, looky here, you have today Joe Biden is the one bringing us into World War III. Everything that he said on here on how, how, what you should have to worry about, Donald Trump is everything that you had to worry about, really, Joe Biden. Never Donald Trump. And I have a theory here that everything that Joe claims that people are going to do bad, no matter if it's Donald Trump or any other Republican that he's going to diminish with shit like this everything he claims that they're gonna do in fact he's gonna be the one to do that exact shit but we can give it all thanks to Joe Biden for starting this goddamn war and it was never Donald Trump's fault for holding you back on shit that you tried to get past Joe because it wasn't Donald Trump holding you and Obama back for the eight years that you complete morons was in. Donald Trump never came into the picture in politics until after he ran for president and got his term in. But the only fucking things that really have to do with you becoming president in our country is to be a citizen born in this land and you gotta be either like 35 or 45 before you can even ever decide to run for president. You don't have to be a politician. You don't have to be a lawyer. You don't have to be some judge. You don't have to be some ex-military and shit to run. And obviously we can clearly see that a person that came from a, just a basic citizen that ran businesses in that compared to a career politician that's been in his whole fucking life but yet do they ever fucking really do anything for you no they make shit harder for both you and i and for a change for a change when donald trump got in we actually had a real american patriot to become fucking president. I never fucking supported fucking the Bush family. They're complete fuck ups too. Just like Joe, career politicians, driving Americans into the ground while they sit back and benefit from our demise. 
but yet you're still gonna sit there and blame it all on fucking Trump because you're too pig-headed and you're too idiotic to go and actually search up shit. You're just gonna listen to certain people and take their word as if it's coming from a god. And they're no goddamn better or different than you or I. They're just a basic fucking human being. Because of their title is why they're special. But from birth, they was not birthed to be some special person in this world. They're as fragile as you and I, and they can be taken out of this world as quickly as either you and I can be. And I really gotta say, I love how these idiots are trying to say that this war is started because of Donald Trump and the Republicans, that we support this war? Are you, you are clearly out of your fucking minds. And you all are going to hell for the shit you are fucking trying to pull. There is not a single Republican that supports this war. There is not a shred of evidence that you could ever fucking pull and say that it's Donald Trump's fault. Your word is not evidence. Your hearsay is not evidence. It's not fact or anything. You all think you can just talk out of your ass and not have to show proof of anything. And that's why your party is full of morons. Here's a big thing. Why in the fuck would Trump allow Vladimir to attack Ukraine? He wouldn't. Guess why? His own fucking wife is from Ukraine. And on top of it too, Vladimir actually respected and feared Trump. Does he respect or even fear Joe Biden? No. A fucking fly wouldn't fear Joe Biden's old, slow, pathetic, degrading ass. But check out this video here that I have for you. It was a video taken of Snake Island of 13 soldiers that has been reported on losing their life but there has been other reports that state that some has survived but doesn't state on exactly how many survivors but then other articles state that there was no survivors that all 13 men lost their lives and they basically told this Russian gunship to go fuck themselves, but take a look. So there was the video of the 13 Ukrainian soldiers versus a Russian gunship quick update on the 13 Ukrainian soldiers versus you know the gunship um so the only news places that are saying any survivors out of those 13 men are say CNN NBC ABC MSNBC so on and so forth the ones that are in their little tight-knit group there was no survivors out of the 13 soldiers. All Ukrainian soldiers on Snake Island has been killed in action. So it really pisses me off that these soft fake news sources are going to spread this type of misinformation to, you know, the gunship. Um, so the only news places that are saying any survivors out of those 13 men are say 
CNN, NBC, ABC, MSNBC, so on and so forth. The ones that are in their little tight-knit group. There was no survivors out of the 13 soldiers. All Ukrainian soldiers on Snake Island has been killed in action. So it really pisses me off that these soft fake news sources are going to spread this type of misinformation too. This shit would not be happening if Donald Trump was in office. Honest to God, I was calling that they was going to start a cold war if Obama had stayed in any longer and if Hillary had won. Oh, this shit would have been started four years ago. It wouldn't just be starting now. And funny, no sooner the, the next Democrat get in there, we're basically into the Cold War. And if it wasn't for this stupid, fake-ass COVID pandemic shit that Joe started behind Donald Trump's back to try to make him look bad, because who else was working with China the way that Joe was? Who else was working with Russia the way that Joe was? He had his own fucking son over in Ukraine making millions doing a job that he had clearly no fucking idea, skill, or any kind of know-how on how to do it. You mean to tell me that that he was getting three million dollars, I think it was, a year? And you wouldn't know right from wrong, and even if you did, you wasn't going to do shit right. You wasn't going to rat them out, right? Because they needed a highly paid dumbass that is going to lie and deceive people to work for them. I mean, everything that they said Trump was doing with Russia and Ukraine, come to find out, it was the Bidens all along, not the Trump family. I mean, where has Trump ever been easy with Russia or even China? He was harder on them than Joe could ever fucking be. And Joe is going to sell these people down the road just like he did Iraq. If we don't do something and get this old senile fuck out of office. I guarantee you that he has started this war purely to take soldiers from our country out. So he can bring in people from another country in to enforce his martial law on us. Not only has he caused chaos here in this country, now he's causing chaos worldwide. When is enough enough? How many fucking chances are you going to give somebody? Are you really going to give this motherfucker chance after chance until there can't be no more chances because he's killed himself, you, and every fucking body in this world, including the planet? Because then it's going to be too late. You can't give anybody chances like that. Not fucking Democrat, nor Republican. If somebody's driving the goddamn world into the ground like that, you need to cut the fucking fucker's head off. It's that fucking simple. And to get a little bit back on the topic, talking about these sanctions now that Joe Biden has tried to create to th thinking that it's going to make Putin stand down. They're a big enough co country to basically make everything in-house and take care of themselves for the most part. And they're like the second biggest the energy producer so they have stuff that other countries need so we have germany's olaf scholz opposes inclusion of swift in russia sanctions for now which basically they was going to try to 
I guess what I took it as is that Joe wants to basically devalue the Russian ruble to a point that he'll cause an uprising in Russia with the citizens because they're not going they're going to have issues being able to buy shit now so it's going to affect more than just the rich and powerful but it's beyond ridiculous that this dickwad from Germany is going to do this but it's understandable because you got to look at it here too they are controlled by Russia for like 70% of their economy because they get 70% of their energy from Russia. But he needs to look at it this way and they need to let us start pumping shit from America because we was the ones that would have su uh, supplied these people during this type of issue so they could have stood strong and just focused on this. The biggest thing is we need to cut off the oil. We need to cut off their energy. That is where it's going to hurt them. Until that is done, nothing else is going to phase them. Nothing else is going to put a dent into this. And then this was also, I believe, from Politico. Biden White House slammed after acknowledging sanctions not designed to disrupt Russia energy exports. Well, that couldn't possibly be because the number one export out of Russia is energy, electricity, oil and gas well and and natural gas as well and not only they say by freezing their bank accounts that's really going to stop them from being able to fund this war meanwhile while america is being forced to get oil and shit in russia when we don't need to we haven't needed that since Donald Trump made us energy sufficient to where we could actually export it ourselves. Joe Biden gave Russia the pipeline that he shut down here in America to Vladimir as a gift, which gave him 100% control over all natural gas for all of Europe. But no, he's not trying to support Vladimir. You didn't see Trump giving any gifts to Vladimir. Now, did Joe Biden pay all of his tax money for the gift especially of something that massive like he tried to attack Trump for giving cars and things like that to employees but no 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 Trump has to be behind it all but yet look who looks like their buddies or at least Biden he's like that weird geeky kid that that nobody wants to fuck with in school, but he wants to get in with the cool kids. So they're gonna fucking use him and be like, yeah, if you get me this, I might just let you in. Oh, thanks, you got me that? Well, now I need this. So if you get this, this will really help out your chances. So he goes and gets them that, you know? And it's just a never-ending trend. And he's so ecstatic that they're even talking to him. He's just so dumb. And he'll just give them whatever the fuck they want. And never realize that he's never going to get in with the cool kids. That's Joe. But not only 
He wasn't even the smart nerd. He was the dumb nerd, second from the last of his class. What have you guys done throughout this slow-moving Russia crisis that has worked? In what capacity? Well, I, the president talked to Putin. He talked to the G7. He threatened sanctions. He put sanctions in place. Now he says the sanctions are going to take 30 days. Uh, or about a month. Do you guys think the people in Ukraine have about a month? Well, Peter, let me just take a step back and explain to everyone how diplomacy works and how our approach from the United States has worked. Uh, what the president has done is he has built a global coalition uh, to stand up in the face of President Putin. So what's this coalition that Joe's built up against Vladimir that you speak of? Jin, because I don't see any troops going into Ukraine and standing with them. I see that he's putting them in all these other countries, making sure that they don't go into there to help surround them, but that's not doing as much as I guarantee you Trump would have done. And can these people really hold out for a month like this reporter asked you, Jen? I don't know. I mean, right now they're doing pretty good, I think. They are faced against with like over a 100,000 troops of Russian soldiers. And so far... They have killed 6,000 Russian soldiers within the first week. So it looks like it's about a 1,000 soldiers a day that they're killing. Um, I don't think from... I don't really remember the numbers I've been hearing for that side because they're just throwing up like small numbers day by day rather than throwing up the big numbers like they did for the Russian soldiers. Uh, as much as I've heard is that they've lost, say, 20-some civilians every day, give or take maybe a few hundred. So a few hundred to, like, total 6,000, I mean... I think that Ukraine's given it to them pretty good, but they're definitely going to need support if he's still bringing in the hun hundred and some odd thousand troops that he has. Now here's a clip, I forget what the guy's name is, but he's going over what sanctions they've Put in place so far which is honestly absolutely a joke they're not going to stop him but check this dumb shit out thank you jen good to see all of you again but this is a briefing i never wanted to give um i'd like to start by saying the prayers of the entire world are with the people of ukraine today as they suffer an unjustified unprovoked and premeditated attack by the russian military forces President Biden has said from the start of this crisis, if Putin chooses to invade, the cost to Russia will be immediate and profound to its financial system, to its economy, to its technology base, and to its strategic position in the world. As the world has now witnessed, Putin has made his choice. He rejected diplomacy and chose war. And today, the president has announced our response. Because of Putin's choices, his flagrant violation of international law and his utter disregard for the principles that underpin peace and security across the world, we will now ensure his decision is remembered as a strategic failure. The only one that's a strategic failure here is Joe Biden and any idea that can come from the Democratic Party. Today, we impose an unprecedented package of financial sanctions and export restrictions in lockstep with our allies and partners that will isolate Russia from the global financial system, shut down its access to cutting edge technology, and undercut Putin's strategic ambitions to diversify and modernize 
his economy. Well, I really don't see where these sanctions are really going to get him unless he hits them in the energy field. Other than that, these are not going to give anything in because they don't need America to get microchips and things like that. And even if you go and look at some documentaries on Elon Musk talking about rockets and things like that, Russia's pretty proud of their rockets. And as far as I know, they're built in-house from start to finish. So as far as I know, what technology do they get from America for their rockets? Because for the longest time, places was using their technology for rockets. And then also China. Do you really think that they're going to adhere to these restrictions and whatnot? If they can make money, they're gonna make money. And you know China, they want to dominate the world, including Russia, but they are tighter buddies than they would ever be with Joe Biden. They think Joe Biden is a chump, so they're going to walk all over him because he's not going to do anything. He, he's too ignorant to do anything that's actually going to affect them. Go look back at what Obama said about Joe. He is a disaster when it comes to foreign policies. If you don't want to listen to me, listen to fucking Obama. If you love fucking Biden so much, you should fucking be sucking Obama's dick. So fucking heed Obama's words. He is a foreign policy disaster. He has never been right with not one foreign policy. Not while he was a vice president. Not while he was a politician. Not while he's a fucking sitting president. Not only... Is he a disaster with foreign policy? He's a disaster with home policy. And a lot of these sanctions sound an awful lot familiar. That's right. He, Joe Biden, gave half of these orders and ideas to Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, to use against the fucking truckers. But these ain't no just your average, ordinary citizens, Joe. You can't just freeze somebody's money up that actually has a fucking military force that'll go to fucking and die for them. You have no idea what you fuckers started. And I've been fucking predicting this, and I knew we was going to go into a Cold War as soon as another Democrat got in the house. They have doomed us all. We must cut the head off of the snake. Uh, on financial sanctions, I stood at this podium on Tuesday and said uh, we would impose the most severe sanctions ever levied on Russia if Putin proceeded with the invasion. Which are what? Shit that's simply going to hinder the civilians and not the fucking government. But go on. Today we're following through. We will impose sanctions on Russia's two largest financial institutions, Sparebank and VTB, which together hold more than half of the Russian banking system's assets, over $750 billion in total. For VTB, we will freeze all of its assets touching the U.S. financial system and prohibit U.S. persons from doing any business with the bank. For Sparebank, we will sever its access to the U.S. financial system. We'll also freeze the assets of and prohibit any business dealings with three additional Russian banks with combined assets of over $70 billion. We'll also restrict U.S. investors from providing debt or equity financing for 13 of the most critical uh, Russian state-owned enterprises, which combined have estimated assets nearing $1.5 trillion. And finally, we'll also impose sanctions on the executives at these state-owned institutions 
as well as additional Russian elites who were complicit in Putin's kleptocracy and their family members, those who've shared in the Kremlin's corrupt gains and stored their wealth in yachts and luxury condos and fancy cars will now share in the pain of these measures. Well, see, just like I said, shit that's purely going to affect the citizens and not the government, not people that are funding the government, that are in the stock market of the government somehow, it's not gonna affect them. And I would love to see them go and try to confiscate these so-called yachts and things of that nature from these rich people. Uh, I've never seen that or heard of that type of shit in history. So I'm going to love to watch this play out for that because know what? They're not gonna go for their yachts. They say they are, but they're not going to do shit to that because you wanna know why? It's more of a thing that not only has he created inflation in our country, that's not good enough. He wants to create a worldwide inflation, which I'm sure that they're gonna give him a percentage out of all the extra shit that they make in from that. So it's a fucking Ponzi scheme, you know? Fuck that shit. <sighs> And on top of this, it's already caused inflation to go up 30%. So it's diminished the ruble by 30% of its, of its previous most recent value. And then on top of that, they have diminished the stock market by like 40% in Russia. So I guarantee you that it's gonna put a little downer into the rich people, but they're gonna get by just fine. It's the little people of Russia that this shit is going to hinder. But that's all that Joe Biden knows how to do is create laws that hinder people like you and I. It's bullshit, it's pathetic, and should have seen out of 30 some years of what this motherfucker is all about. And he ain't for us. He ain't for you, he's not for me, he's for him, his fucking family, and these tyrants. That's all he's for. In terms of the financial impact, as I said, these are the most impactful and significant sanctions uh, the U.S. has ever taken. But financial sanctions are just one part of our response. We're also unveiling today an expansive and unprecedented set of export restrictions developed in historically close coordination uh, with the European Union, Australia, Japan, Canada, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and Taiwan. These new measures include sweeping restrictions on Russian military end users to impair Putin's military capabilities, and will also deny exports across Russia to sensitive cutting edge technology, primarily targeting Russia's defense, aerospace, and maritime sectors. In total, the United States and our partners will effectively be cutting off more than half of all high-tech imports going into Russia. This includes curbing Russia's access to advanced semiconductors and other foundational technologies that Russia needs to diversify and modernize its economy. Which, like I already stated, that, yeah, you're cutting them off from America, big whoop. You got China that knocks off every fucking thing from us. You know that they're, they're tighter with China than any other fucking place. So how are you going to tell me that they ain't going to be able to acquire somewhat of the same shit? May not be made in America, but what is made in America anymore? 90% of the shit is made in China. So what are we, the middlemen? So what, we get the shit made in China, ship it to America, and then ship it to Russia? But then they can just cut us the fuck out. Then they can just go straight from fucking Russia, I mean China, to Russia. It's a lot more simple. So... Are, are you more or less doing them a favor? Because that's what it sounds like. Working in tandem, these financial sanctions and the export controls will undercut Putin's aspirations to project power on the world stage. Putin's already pulled the only thing that I think and that he thinks that he's gonna need to show his power on the world stage. And that's the nuclear firepower that Russia has. And I guarantee you that if they don't match America, they might have a bit more. 
And that's the only, and that's his last resource too. And he's already pulling this shit and it's not even fucking two weeks in. He's already threatening nuclear war. The fuck? Uh, and those impacts intensified dramatically just today. The Russian stock market plunged over 30% at one point uh, before being halted by local regulators. Russia's currency, the ruble, weakened to its weakest value on record against the dollar uh, before the central bank intervened. And just like I've been saying, all that's doing is affecting the little people. These rich fuckers got enough money. Remember, Germany, I think it was during like World War One or Two, it cost like upwards of nine million marks for one loaf of bread. Who's gonna be the ones struggling if that kind of inflation hits their market? The little people. The, the rich people are gonna control the market, so they're always gonna be taken care of. It's the people that are the little guys, people like me, and most likely the people, anybody watching this video. It's us that's affected. So where is these sanctions doing shit to stop this war? None of it is really affecting Vladimir. And like I've stated, I doubt China is going to stand with the sanctions and I'm sure they're gonna profit and supply Russia with all the shit that America won't or the other countries won't which China already does supply most of the world with most of their shit because most everybody gets their shit made in China. The fuck people like us out of work that we should be doing and not being exported out of our countries. And the price the market is charging the Russian government to borrow is now above 15%. These impacts over time will translate into higher inflation, higher interest rates, lower purchasing power, lower investment, lower productive capacity, lower growth, and lower living standards in Russia. To be clear, this is not the outcome we wanted. It's both a tragedy for the people of Ukraine and a very raw deal for the Russian people. But Putin's war of choice has required that we do what we said and to ensure this will be a strategic failure. And I gotta say this again, the only one that looks like a strategic failure is the Democratic Party's fucking, I don't even know if you would call this an attack. What kind of fucking attack is this? It's a fucking joke is what it is. And you, you say you didn't want it to come to that? Bullshit. You're, you're punishing the people of the country more than you are the government that's actually supposedly started this war. Who are we to say that this shit wasn't false flag propaganda videos? Who was the first one to say anything about false flag propaganda? They wanted to call that a conspiracy back in 9-11 or any time any conservative, Republican or whatnot says anything, but yet we're supposed to just believe any of the shit that the left says when it falls into the same fucking category. But as long as it's from their side, it's believable. But if it's from the, the other side, no, how dare you believe that garbage? At least there's more factual evidence and whatnot behind the shit on the right compared to just your hearsay and like, oh, how they love to get offended if you don't take them for their word because like, oh, they couldn't fucking lie, but yet they're a fucking compulsive liar or some shit. You know, never take people on their fucking words. So how are you gonna continue to do shit that doesn't really affect the government? They're gonna put all that onto the people. You know it, I know it, and you would do the same thing just like the inflation here in America. Who does that affect the most? The workers of the country, not the fucking people sitting back treating every day like it's a fucking vacation. You ain't gonna confiscate any of those super yachts, mega yachts, whatever the fuck you wanna call them, yachts. You ain't gonna take nothing from them rich people. 
you're just gonna make it more expensive for the everyday people of Russia. What kind of sense does that make? Honestly, I really think all this shit is propaganda. I honest to God think that this is all propaganda. Just a, another excuse to be a reason for hiking up the oil prices. Uh, another uh, distraction to try to get the heat off of Joe. So uh, to try to put all the blame onto Putin, just like he tried to do for Trump. But he can't do that for Trump because nobody buys the shit anymore. Only the dumb 20% fucking people that still support your dumbass do. And, and 20% to 80% of the population of this country, your shit don't mean nothing at that. Nonsense needs to stop. We need to impeach Joe. We need to also impeach Kamala and we need to impeach Nancy Pelosi because we already know that this is not any of Joe's ideas. This is all his campaign team and that they're just using him as a puppet, just like most presidents have always been known for. But you definitely didn't have a puppet in the White House when Trump was there, and this shit would have never started if we still had someone like Trump in the White House. These paper-pushing pansies ain't gonna get nothing done and it wasn't Trump's fault to begin with. You can't say that Trump fucking started this and set you off into it, because we know damn for sure that he did no such thing. And I thought she was in good with fucking Russia. All the propaganda bullshit that you threw over onto Trump, and then you get all the evidence off of fucking Hunter's computer, and you want to disprove that so easily? He was so fucked up, he forgot to get his fucking computer back after it got clean from the viruses from the porn he was looking at. Yeah, that's not believable, right? What kind of shit? But yet we're just gonna believe all this shit that's just hearsay, though. That says everything's Trump's fault. But yet everything that was found on that computer showed damn well that it was the Biden family working in cahoots with Russia and Ukraine. And not to mention too, I've also found out some evidence that the president of Ukraine was an actor before he became president. So, and they keep on trying to label everything, terrorists and everything, actors. They're not actors if they're going and blowing up shit. Actors and acting is portraying to do something of that nature without it really happening, without anybody really getting hurt. Unless you're admitting by calling them all actors that they're all crisis actors and that everything that's been put on TV is all fake. Did I just blow your mind? Cause I kind of just blew my mind. And you meant for every bit of this, Joe, because I really am starting to believe that this is just another tactic to start a worldwide inflation. Just another way to push it and push it to give more reason on to get rid of gold-backed money and things of that nature. To, to go and yet again try to put a chip in us and turn ourselves into a living, breathing credit card that somebody could probably steal all your information from. That easy. Finally, let me just say a few words about the impact of Russia's choices on the U.S. Uh, we've intentionally scoped our sanctions to deliver severe impact on the Russian economy while minimizing the cost to the U.S. as well as our allies and partners. To be clear, our sanctions are not designed to cause any disruption to the current flow of energy from Russia to the world. We've carved out energy payments on a time-bound basis to allow for an orderly transition of these flows away from sanctioned institutions, and we've provided 
other licenses to, to provide for an orderly wind down of business. Does this dummy even understand the words that are coming out of his own damn mouth? You realize that you just stated that it's affecting the Russian economy. Yeah, it's not affecting the Russian government, which is what you need to fucking affect. You're just making it harder on the fucking small people. Fuck the little guy, turn us all into slaves. Yeah, you've designed a thing that's just simply going to affect the citizens, not the politicians, not the rich people, the citizens are going to take the worst force of these sanctions that you've stated you've made. And you state that you wasn't going to do anything to touch the energy sector coming from Russia, which is where you needed to hit. That's their biggest export. That is where you should have fucking hit. You should have hit that, struck hard, and that should have been your first fucking attack. Not the petty shit that actually hinders the citizens and whatnot. You should have attacked the oil. And it makes no fucking sense for you to charge us so much for gas and create a war you know, with Russia, like you've been trying to do since fucking Obama's administration. And now you've even topped Obama on gas price. Now, just because we're twice basically where we was back when Obama was in and made gas over $5 a gallon... You don't need to be making it double that, Joe. We couldn't afford it then, and we definitely couldn't afford it now. What you're going to do is you're trying to make a bunch of excuses on reasons on why you got to keep on, keep on, and keep on raising the price of gas. This past week, it has jumped 20 cents a fucking day, Joe. 20 fucking cents a day, just about, just like Three or four days ago, it was at three dollars and twenty some cents. Now it's at as high as four twenty nine, four nineteen now. In four days, it's jumped a dollar. In not even a week, it's jumped a dollar. You need to be impeached, Joe. And exactly, they're all actors, but. They're actually causing true harm. Their main play is an act. Now, the violence and gore that they're creating probably isn't. I don't know. It might actually be crisis fucking actors to beat it all, too. It was America saying that Russia was going to make a fucking video of them being invaded by Ukraine to give them a reason to invade Ukraine. But was it really, in fact, United States? making the false flag videos of Russia invading Ukraine, I wouldn't be surprised. And you should really keep an eye on Joe and Kamala and Nancy. Now with Kyiv encircled by Russian troops, Joe Biden is headed for a long weekend in Delaware. That's just great, Joe. Biden is now feeling, fleeing the White House, taken off. Uh, he needs his rest and relaxation. My guess is by now he's probably had his ice cream and has taken a long night's sleep. It's been a tough, tough week for Joe. What an absolute disgrace. During this campaign, Biden once proclaimed that a fifth year of Donald Trump as president would spell a disaster for Ukraine. As it turns out, one year under Biden was far worse. Take a look. Is this Joe trying to pull another Iraq deal? where he stated for months and months and months, oh no, they won't take over in three days. They wouldn't take over in a weekend, no, nothing like that. And then they go on vacation, cut off all their cell phones and shit. 
refuse to take any calls, talk to anyone, and then come back and, oh, Iraq has fallen or whatever area. It's all the fucking same to me. It's been the same war. I don't care how many times they've tried to relabel these people from Al-Qaeda to ISIS, now to ISIS-K. I mean, they're getting lazy with names now. It's always been ISIS or Al-Qaeda. They're the same fucking people. And this has been the longest war that we've had in history. And people will try to debate that with me. But just because they changed up the name doesn't mean shit. Just because they changed up the location doesn't mean shit. They're still in the same region. They're still fighting the same people. Therefore, it's the same fucking war. And I don't care how many presidents it changed hands. It was still the same fucking war. But I guess he didn't expect Ukrainians to be as much of fighters as what they are. I tell you, they don't need no U.S. to back them up to kick some ass. I mean, they might need some guns and shit, but look at the fucking uh, pathetic military that the Middle East had. No sooner that we get out, they fucking throw in the white flag to fuck just so they can get fucking beheaded and shit because they don't care that you're fucking giving in that's an easier kill for them and he's abandoned thousands of American citizens over there that has full citizenship to our country so this is people from there that has full citizenship here that he has abandoned over there. That they are hunting. And they want to kill them all. And if they do, that's Joe Biden's fault. Every Each one that dies, it's another head on Joe Biden. Ukrainian people, they are heroically now fighting for their country and for their very existence, their lives. Now, they're using outdated Soviet-era fighters, Ukrainian pilots. Guess what? They're gunning down modern Russian planes. On the ground, Ukrainian soldiers, they're taking out dozens of Russian tanks with American-made Javelin rockets. And meanwhile, regular citizens, men and women all over the country of Ukraine, they're picking up guns, anything they can get their hands on Molotov cocktails, they're all preparing for urban war. Some kind of thing after Putin started surrounding Ukraine with tens of thousands of troops and military equipment in July when Biden did nothing after Putin delivered a deranged message about restoring the Soviet Union's former glory, laying out his plans for the future. And on Monday when Biden did nothing, when Putin told the world that he was going to take Ukraine by force, by the way, I want to be very clear. I'm not suggesting we have a shooting war with Russia. I want to be very clear on this. But for crying out loud, could we at least put the sanction that matters the most in place and at least stop Russia from selling their oil and accumulating even more money and more wealth that is funding territorial ambitions like Ukraine? Could we maybe sanction Russia's energy production? That is the one sanction that would be meaningful. At least we could start producing more oil and gas right here at home, and then America could get rich. It would be great for national security. Wouldn't have to worry about Putin. Wouldn't have to worry about the Straits of Hormuz or the Middle East. We'd create high-paying career jobs here in America. And at the same time, we would be energy independent, and we'd be able to help out our NATO allies and Western European countries that desperately need oil and energy for their economies. There's not a chance. Is there anyone in the Biden administration, you know, that's not a total idiot at this point? Now, with Kiev encircled past time 
for devastating sanctions on Russian oil and gas. And if you're not willing to take that one hard step, that means you're not willing to put the pain on Putin that he deserves. Because without that pain, what's going to stop him from invading neighboring Poland or the Baltic states? Okay, well, if an attack on, on one is an attack on all, okay, I, oh, that's the NATO agreement. Is that really going to work? If that happens, will NATO go to war with Russia? Anyway, it's either going to be World War III or we're going to abandon our allies, abandon NATO. NATO will be exposed as a paper tiger. Now, don't forget what happened in 1994 during the Budapest Agreement. That's when Ukraine, they agreed to give up their nuclear arsenal. Three years earlier, in 1991, they seceded from the former Soviet Union. Okay? They were the third largest holder of nuclear weapons in the world, and they were holding on to those nuclear weapons. As part of this agreement, in exchange, they handed those weapons back to Russia to be destroyed. Russia promised they'd never attack Ukraine and that the U.S. and the U.K. would back them up, meaning the Ukrainians. What is the lesson from this agreement? I guess, number one, don't ever give up nuclear weapons if you have them. But I'm going to wrap it up here. It's getting pretty long, so I'm going to make this quick. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And please share the videos and help grow the channel. But until next time, I'm your boy Fat Mike. I will be coming out with some more videos here soon related to this war and gas crisis. So until next time, I'm out. Deuces.